The spring semester is quickly coming to a close and several groups are hosting final events before it all ends. Coming up, we'll have the details on a couple of options from the weekend that gave students a fun escape from schoolwork and honored a special group of students. A Red Raider football player is headed for the pros after joining a small group of Red Raiders whose name was called on the first night of the NFL Draft. MCTV's Alejandra Salazar will have the latest details on that story and more in sports. And spring commencement 2023 is just over a week away. We'll have a look at the schedule of ceremonies and let you know how you can watch graduates walk the stage from home or in person. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Natalie Dupre. And I'm Malone Graham. The spring 2023 semester is quickly coming to a close. Tomorrow marks the last day of classes, finals start Thursday, and graduation is just under two weeks away. With the end of the school year approaching, several campus groups wrapped up the semester over the weekend with some concluding events. Yesterday afternoon, Mentor Tech held a spring bash in Urbanovsky Park. The event marked the end of the semester, inviting out the entire Texas Tech community to enjoy a fun day of activities. The event kicked off at 2 p.m. and featured bounce houses, outdoor games, arts and crafts, and free food and drinks. Attendees also had the chance to learn more about Mentor Tech along with several other campus groups. Unlike most campus events, one big difference with yesterday's Spring Bash is that Mentor Tech also invited the Lubbock community to join in on the fun. The goal of the event was to help students, staff, and faculty connect with people beyond the university. Along with celebrating the end of another semester, Sunday's event also marked the end of Mentor Tech's 20th year serving students at Texas Tech. Throughout the month of April, faculty, staff, and students have been honored through a series of award ceremonies and recognition events. Yesterday, the accolades continued as the university took time to celebrate a special group of students during an annual event. The 2023 Black Convocation was held yesterday afternoon at 2 p.m. in the sub ballroom. The yearly event takes time to honor and celebrate the academic success and accomplishments of black students who are completing a college degree. Yesterday's event included Red Raiders who will be graduating in the upcoming spring, summer, and next fall's commencement ceremonies. During the event, several black university leaders, along with President Skubanek, addressed the crowd. At the end of the ceremony, each of the graduating students were presented with a kente stole to be worn with their cap and gown. Kente is considered to be the most recognized African textiles. The stole includes four colors. Black representing Africa, red represents the blood of the forefathers, yellow represents gold, and green represents the richness of the land. The Texas Tech Black Convocation has been an annual spring event since it was reestablished in 2014. As students leave campus at the end of the school year, construction and renovations kick into gear as buildings empty out. But there's been several projects continuing through the spring, including one that is starting to stand out in the university skyline. The new Academic Sciences Building is currently under construction on the southeast side of campus. The site is located directly behind the Chemistry Building in an area that used to include a parking lot, storage buildings, and a green space. Construction began in December of 2021 with the excavation of the site to make way for the building's basement. Since then, an additional three floors have been built and exterior work is currently focusing on the roof of the structure. When it's finished, the facility will be featured with 131,000 square feet of research, teaching, and laboratory space for the Department of Physics, Chemistry, Biology, and Psychology. The building will also include offices for faculty and staff along with student collaboration spaces. The $112 million project is expected to continue through December with completion slated for 2024. The last three days of April included a large swing in temperatures with highs ranging from the 60s to the 90s from Friday through Sunday. In fact, yesterday ended up being the hottest day of the year so far. Warmer temperatures are becoming the norm, but can we expect another temperature swing as we continue into the first week of May? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. The MCTV tower cam is showing a few more clouds than we saw over the weekend. Beyond that, it's been mostly sunny today and temperatures are climbing a bit slower than yesterday. Highs are expected to reach the upper 70s late this afternoon, coming in a lot cooler than the near record temperatures we experienced on Sunday. Tonight, the clouds will continue to increase and temperatures will drop back into the low 50s. There should be a light breeze throughout the evening with speeds staying around 10 to 20 miles per hour. 
Tomorrow we'll see a lot more clouds than today with overcast conditions expected by mid-morning. Even with the cloud cover, temperatures will be nearly identical to today with the high topping out near 80 degrees. Later in the day, there's even a possibility of thunderstorms after sunset. On dead day, the sun should make a return and we'll see a slight increase in temps with highs expected to be back in the low 80s. Breezy conditions remain in the forecast and there's another chance of thunderstorms after sunset. But on Thursday, gusty winds return to the area with speeds expected to climb to 20 to 30 miles per hour. Clouds will also be back, but highs are currently expected to stay in the mid-80s. After sunset, winds will begin to drop, transitioning to breezy conditions around midnight. Looking ahead, the final full week of the semester should end with the return of sunshine and very warm temperatures, with rain chances increasing this weekend. As we mentioned earlier, the campus events calendar has been packed over the last few weeks as the semester comes to an end. But with finals just two days away, there's only a handful of events happening this week. One of those options is taking place later this evening as the Student Government Association hosts their centennial celebration. Members of Texas Tech student organizations are invited to stop by the McKenzie Merkett Alumni Center tonight at 7 p.m. for a night of free fun. The event includes a DJ and dancing along with a raffle, a photo booth, and free cookies and refreshments. Tonight's event was organized as a thank you to student orgs for a successful school year. All members of a club or organization get in for free. For more information on tonight's event, search TTUSGA on Facebook and Instagram. After another long semester, some students may be needing to have parking citations dismissed before the end of the school year. To help make that process a little easier on the pocketbook, Transportation and Parking Services has instituted a special promotion that could also help beautify the campus. Bikes for Sites was announced earlier today through TPS's social media accounts. The promotion allows any student the chance to trade an unused bicycle for the dismissal of a parking citation. TPS is accepting any bikes that are adult size and are not missing any parts. Proof of ownership is also required, which can be done by showing that the bike is registered through the TPS website or by demonstrating that you have the key or combination to a bike currently stored on campus. The goal of Bikes for Sites is to help rid the campus of unused bikes and any bike turned into TPS will be resold during the annual bike sale in the fall. For more information on the Bikes for Sites promotion, visit parking.ttu.edu. Texas Tech football was back in the headlines again last week as a former Red Raider awaited his call to the next level. And the Texas Tech baseball and softball teams were back on the diamond for another weekend of Big 12 action. MCTV's Alejandra Salazar joins us with the details on those stories in sports. Alejandra? Thanks, Malone and Natalie. The NFL draft was this past weekend, and a handful of Red Raiders signed to play for multiple teams in the pros. One highly talked about name being Tyree Wilson, who was picked seventh overall by the Las Vegas Raiders. While some analysts were skeptical if he would get picked up early due to his previous foot injury, Raiders general manager Dave Ziegler was excited about drafting Tyree. Ultimately, we had him here. Uh, we felt comfortable um, with where he is medically and things of that nature. And so um, it made sense for us. It wasn't something that ultimately, if it was something that was going to keep us from doing it, obviously we wouldn't have done that. We have players that um, aren't on the board for medical reasons. And uh, we go through a long process of the medical stuff. Our doctors, was, there's the combine, the combine rechecks. Then we did our own medical stuff when he was here and you know, felt comfortable with it. Big congrats to all the Red Raiders whose dreams came true over this past weekend. Now moving on to games in the Diamond, the Texas Tech softball team took on number seven Oklahoma State here at home along with celebrating their six graduating seniors. And although they may have not won the series, the ladies did beat OSU in the second game of the doubleheader on Saturday for the first time since 2018. In the bottom of the eighth, Alana Barraza and Peyton Blythe knocked back-to-back -back two out singles to set up Ariana Villa for the game-winning hit. Villa stepped up to the plate and roped the walk-off single to hand Texas Tech its first win over the Pokes since 2018. It also marked Tech's second walk-off win of the season after coming from behind. The ladies will take the week off for their conference by week before heading to Oklahoma City for the Big 12 tournament. The league tournament will kick off on Thursday, May 11th.
And as for baseball, the Red Raiders travel to Manhattan, Kansas for a must-win series against the K-State Wildcats. While both teams are close in RPIs, this series would also help clear the way for either team for a chance at the conference title. After losing the series opener, number 14 Texas Tech would even the series on Saturday, winning 5-2. The Red Raiders had another elite effort from their starting pitcher in the series as Trendon Parrish tossed a career high of nine strikeouts. He went five full innings and did not allow an earned run or issue any walks. Offensively, freshman shortstop Tracer Lopez would be the leader in the Red Raiders' comeback. He was responsible for the go-ahead RBI single in the fourth inning and put some distance between the two teams in the sixth with a two-out, two-run home run to put Tech on top 5-2. to two. Now, in the rubber match of the series, the Red Raiders would lead 8-7 to seven deep into the game, but a three-run rally by the Wildcats in the bottom of the eighth inning helped secure K-State's 10-8 victory in this Big 12 matchup. Texas Tech will be back in action at home on Friday to start a three-game out-of-conference series versus Sam Houston. It will also be the final non-conference weekend for the regular season for the Red Raiders. Coverage for those games will all be on ESPN+. That's all I got. Back to you guys in the studio. So, Alejandro, with the semester ending, I've heard this is also your last time to anchor sports for MCTV. It is. It's kind of bittersweet right now, but you know what? I'm excited for the new chapter, so I'm leaving here with a big smile. <laughs> Post-graduation will definitely be a great moment. Yes. Okay, thanks Alejandra. Speaking of graduation, the 2023 spring commencement ceremonies will be taking place in less than two weeks. That's true, Natalie. Thousands of students are expected to receive their diploma during five ceremonies at the United Supermarkets Arena. Graduation exercises start on Friday, May 12th at 11 a.m. with a ceremony dedicated to the College of Arts and Sciences. Later that afternoon, students from the College of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources and the College of Business will walk the stage at 3 p.m. Friday's schedule finishes with the graduate school ceremony at 6.30 p.m. Then on Saturday, May 13th, it'll be a packed house as the College of Architecture, Education, Human Sciences, Visual and Performing Arts, and the Honors College join University Studies graduates for the 9 a.m. ceremony. Commencement concludes on Saturday afternoon as degree candidates from the College of Media and Communication and the College of Engineering wrap up the schedule. In-person seating will be limited, but all ceremonies will also be streamed live on the university's website. For more information, visit commencement.ttu.edu. So Malone, today is the last day for both of us to anchor for MCTV. Are you excited for graduation? Yes, I'm ready. Tech's been awesome, but ready for something new. What about you? Yeah, I've been so thankful to have so many people here, the professors, Dr. Robinson at MCTV, and so many people I've met in here. So I'm ready to graduate, but thankful for my time here. 100%. That's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. Have a great summer and check back for more MCTV next fall.